Hey, thanks for everybody being here. Amen. And uh, I don't know, Brother Ralph, we better pray pastor comes back quick. You get more preaching from the auditorium. <laughs> it's all this uh, preaching back. Amen. Thanks for everybody being here. Now, me teaching this lesson will make you appreciate Pastor Josh. School, okay? So, but uh, this is part of a discipleship class that Pastor had uh, uh, laid out. For the Britain, uh, Britain Brandon, he taught it last time. Um, we've got a good class uh, going this time. By the way, everybody who's in my class, I have your lessons for next week too, if you want those. It's a foundational system. Oh, is it not on? Okay. Hey, don't make me think. It is not going on. There's something else for the Ralph. Good for somebody to know the tricks of the trade there. Okay, now for this time, I pray you'll speak through me, Lord. Help me not to say anything or even infer anything, Lord, that is not of you. I pray we'll focus in on you, your words, and each person here, Lord, who's saved has your spirit, Lord. So help them to take, hear these words, this teaching, and if they already know it, Lord, help them to be confirmed in it. Help them to be assured. If they don't, help them to learn this so that they can pass it on to somebody else. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, is that on now? It's still on? It says right, power. about five other brothers up here. <laughs> <laughs> it says on, brother. Is it on mute? Oh, yeah. It's on mute. You good now? Is that good? Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. So this discipleship class, you may, if you haven't gone through it, you might want to go through it next time. Uh, we're already halfway through. It's uh, by Brother Kyle Stevens, and it's a, a foundational kind of a format. So there's no way I can go through all of that here with you. So I'm going to highlight things. The people that are in the class, they get these on every week, and then they build upon it. The very first one. Let me just list this out, was on salvation. And, you know, all of this has to do with people that are saved. So if you're not saved in here, I'd encourage you to get saved because otherwise you can never become a disciple. And there's a whole lot of teaching out there, people, that if you get religious or you do this or you say the name of Jesus, that somehow you're a disciple. That's not true. Okay, a disciple is somebody who's knowledgeable about what God did for them for us and so this very first thing is you got to be saved which allows us to be justified and have access to god the father through our lord and savior jesus christ there's only one mediator between god and man the man christ jesus okay so we don't want to ever forget that then we went into lesson two and we learned about the fact that we can be assured of this salvation because god's word says it now if you don't believe this book then, you know, there's people that will listen to you. They'll get saved, and they basically believe it because you said it. But it's better if you know what's in the Word of God, okay, so that you can show them or they can learn. Then the third is eternal security. This is something that is close to my heart because I grew up in an Armenian doctrine where basically you could lose your salvation. So one of the things that uh, people kind of needle Baptists on as they say, oh, you're one of those once saved, always saved. Well, yeah, I am, okay, because that's what the Bible says, okay? The Bible says I can count on it, and I'm sealed. So you want to get that down, and you want to make sure that you know that once you're saved, you're saved. And then next we went into the Scripture, being the Word of God, and fortunately we had some great teaching. Uh, pastor's been doing that, and if you have any doubt about the Word of God, I'd encourage you to get involved in the church history classes because you will never again doubt the Word of God. If you haven't taken the time to study out why we believe the King James Bible, you need to do that, okay? I strongly encourage you. By the way, there's a whole uh, lending library back there in that closet. Just uh, don't let somebody lock you in there, but it's in there, and you can sign out the books. we got a lot of good books, a lot of uh, doctrinal teachings that you can get back there, so I'd encourage you to do that. And then prayer. We went through prayer. Now, it's one of the areas that I'm trying to work on, and, you know, we it's um, 
we used this illustration here last week on prayer. Basically, you're, you're looking at, here's God, here's me, okay, here's the Bible, and here's prayer. Okay, we learn how to pray from the Bible. It's basically, this is me talking to God here, okay, and the Bible is tell, talking to me. God's talking to me. So, I mean, down here. So, basically, you, what you want to do is make sure that in your prayer time, you're also just making, you know, making those petitions to God. I hope you're praying for somebody to get saved. You know, there's every one of us knows somebody who's not saved. So in this, but next we're going into baptism and that's what this is about. So, um, and you guys are gonna have to forgive me for my scribbling here, but uh, baptism, probably one of the most misunderstood areas of Christianity. I'll tell you a story. I was out at the uh, cemetery because I'm in that business and I was out having to do some refurbishing on uh, one of the headstones there and I ran into a lady and we just got talking and she uh, was complaining about her kids that they weren't living for God. She was a very, very devout Catholic because the headstone for her husband there had all the symbols, Catholic symbols, Mary, you know, uh, Jesus on dead on the cross, you know, and that type of thing. So I got talking to her and asking her, you know, did she know for sure she's going to heaven? And she said, well, I think so. But then she jumped into her kids and she said, well, at least I know my kids were baptized. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's damnable heresy, okay? That's of the devil. It's, it's totally of the devil. And there's only two ordinances that God left us to do, and that's baptism and the Lord's Supper. Those are the only two. But you might have recently seen in the news, uh, you know, certain celebrities, these Asbury Park or whatever, and they're making a big deal about baptism. But I didn't read anywhere in there about salvation through faith, you know, by grace. And so people are confused about this issue. So we need to be very clear about it. Now, we know for a fact that there's seven types of baptism in the Bible. And the first one, of course, is Moses. And you might want to make reference or note these down if you don't know them. Moses' uh, baptism is in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 and 2. So if you want to keep a reference on that later, and you might do this because I'm going to have to give you a lot of references. The second baptism was the baptism of John, John the Baptist. Okay, And that was to show that Jesus, you know, to bring him in to the Jewish kingdom there, and that's in John chapter 1, verse 31. The third one is the baptism of suffering. That baptism is the suffering of Jesus. It's uh, uh, noted in Matthew 20, verses 22 and 23. Then you have the baptism of the Jews. Who knows where that is? Acts chapter 2. Okay, it was simply for the Jews. Then we had the baptism for the Gentiles. And that's in Acts chapter 10, verses 47 and 48. This is with Peter. And who was the first person he baptized? As a Gentile? Cornelius, yes. You get an A. I'll give you a lollipop at the end of the day, okay? All right. Cornelius, yes, he was the first Gentile, and uh, so uh, Peter uh, brought him, told him, say, hey, what hinders this guy to get baptized? Then we have the baptism of the Spirit. Now, who has the baptism of the Spirit? Yes. We do, yes. If you're saved, born again, you are baptized with the Holy Spirit Amen. because of that yes. spiritual circumcision, Colossians chapter 2, if you want to look at that, or 1 Corinthians 12, 13. And then we have this one, which is kind of scary, but baptism of fire, Matthew 3, 11, which is judgment. And we have, you know, that notation by the Lord there that, um, you know, it's pretty serious. Okay. Okay. 
We're going to talk about, go to Matthew chapter 3, verses 11 and 12. And let's look at the baptism of fire. Let's look at that briefly. It says, this is John the Baptist talking, I indeed baptize you with water under repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Now, what is that chaff? That chaff is our works done in the flesh. That's what will be burned up for those of us that are saved. But if you're not saved, guess what? This is lake of fire. That's where your judgment will be. That's the baptism that you will have to face if you are not saved. If you're not born again, that's what you'll face. Let's also look at the baptism of the Spirit. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It says here, For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. Now, the reason why I'm, I'm bringing this verse out especially is this is the verse that Baptist briders use to pervert the doctrine of baptism. Now, if you don't know what a Baptist brider is, we've got them here in this town. Okay, I've been to one, a couple of their churches. This, interestingly, was the issue that Josh, Pastor Josh mentioned in his band text that was a big issue over in the Philippines. And it's part of the reason that Brother Ken Goob invited uh, Brother Bolaris and Pastor over there was to teach this heresy out of the church because it has crept in. It generally comes in initially under Calvinism. They won't want to call it that. They won't claim that they are, but they stop their soul winning. They start believing that people are either are destined to hell or destined to heaven. And then, of course, they get to where they start becoming a closed group. Baptist Briders, okay, I faced this. I spoke to a pastor uh, before I came to this church when I was out searching some other churches. And he told me that if I wasn't baptized by a Baptist pastor in a Baptist church, that I wasn't right with God. Okay, I got baptized in the ocean, okay, by an assembly of God preacher, all right? But I know I got baptized, okay, because that's all it is. is it's an ordinance, you know. It doesn't save me or it doesn't unsave me, okay? So for somebody to promote that doctrine is ludicrous. It really is. So be careful of that. Watch out. If you ever have to leave this church and go somewhere else, be careful, watch out, because it's always subtle. They don't make it a big deal until it comes time to get the where the rubber meets the road, and they start then saying, well, do you want to become a member or not? Well, if you want to become a member, then you got to be baptized by me. And also, this gets into a whole other thing that I won't even touch, but it's this IFB stuff on the man of God. See, they want to promote the man that's doing the baptism. That's what that boils down to. It has nothing to do with God, okay? It, it, the baptism is what something the Lord has told us, and that's what we're going through. But don't ever get hooked into thinking that some man is going to make the difference. It doesn't matter if uh, Mickey Mouse baptized you, okay? I mean, seriously, because you don't find in the Scripture any qualification for the baptizer. You know, you don't find it. If you can find it, bring it to me, okay? All right. And let's see. Let's go through this one last point here. Go to Ephesians chapter 4. And let's talk about what the one true baptism is. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 4 and 5 tells us there is one body, one spirit, even there is you called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. What is that baptism? That baptism is you identifying yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what that is. 
And so what you're trying to do, now this is not a, uh, you know, like I said, there's others that have tried to use this as a tool to become inclusive, you know, and exclude others on this. So you've got to remember that you don't, you don't want to get uh, trapped into that. You might want to write these other scriptures down if you'd like. Uh, Colossians 2.12, Romans 6, verses 3 to 5. That tells you a little bit more about that baptism of the Spirit. And just recognize, and our pastor has done a great job teaching on this, that basically it's that spiritual circumcision that happens that you have the Holy Spirit. Don't think that just because somebody says, well, have you babbled in tongues? And uh, you get the Spirit? I got it when I got saved, okay? I, and it wasn't anything I did except for believing in faith that he could do it. That's all it was. It's based on faith. Okay, and let's talk about uh, believer's baptism here. Okay, that's basically right now us, Gentiles. Believer's baptism, you can go to, uh, go to uh, Matthew 28. Matthew 28, verses 19 through 20. Right at the very end there, when Jesus is giving his final commands, it says, Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Now, this is the baptism that we as Gentiles have, because the Father, that's why we say, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. If you look into Acts, you'll find out that that baptism said you are to be baptized in the name of Jesus because that's when Peter was preaching to the Jews, okay? And that transition hadn't taken place yet, but Jesus was prophesying that, that that's what was going to come to us, all right? So we know that we have that hope. Now, what, how do you get baptized? What's the method? Water. <laughs> okay. Water. Amen. With a squirt gun? <laughs> With father dressed like mother? Kind of <laughs> like that? No. And when you baptize a baby, what happens? All that happens is the baby gets wet and the baby cries. Okay, Amen. that's it. That's right. Otherwise, there's nothing, you know? Oh. It's ridiculous, okay? But the whole reason we do that is so that we show our faith. That's what that is. That's what it's about, is to show that you are identifying with the Lord Jesus Christ. And, of course, the whole thing with being immersed is that because we are buried into his death, we're raised to newness of life, okay? So that's the reason for that. Now, you might want to write these verses down because these are important, but, I, again, I'm not going to have time to cover them all. But who's to be baptized? This is one of the biggest issues as to why what you're seeing on TV, radio, social media, it's all bogus. Okay, because we have absolutely no proof that those people are believers. Okay, you have to be a believer for that baptism to even mean anything. And even then, believe it or not, I'll guarantee you there's been a ton of people baptized that aren't, they're as saved as a goose out on the street okay they're not even saved they're not they think that that's that baptism did something for them okay and it doesn't other than just identify you with the body of christ that's all that that is but here's like i said write these verses down and you'll see how much this affects you john 4 verse 1 this was where jesus said these uh, you can be my disciples as a Jewish believer that's when he was first uh, talking about that Acts 2 41 this is Peter preaching to the Jews that say if you have received his word okay then you can be baptized Acts chapter 8 verse 12 Philip was Simon the sorcerer that was a believer, and of course, he, you have to have the kingdom of God within you, and pastors have done, always done a good job on that kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven. Okay, Jesus came to bring the kingdom of heaven. The Jews rejected it. We'll see it in the millennium. So what do we have? Jesus said that the kingdom of God is within you, all right? And so Philip, he led this, uh, this guy to the Lord 
that had been a sorcerer, and uh, at first he wanted to buy it, but then he got saved. Then Philip also led the Ethiopian eunuch to the Lord, and that's in Acts chapter 8, verse 37. And it's very clear again that he asked him, he said, do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? That's what he asked, okay, very clearly. And that's why it's so important that before, and our pastor does a great job on this, before anybody gets baptized here, you're questioned. Because we don't want you to think that because you got baptized that you're saved, okay? It cannot have anything to do with that. Okay, then we had in Acts chapter 10, verse 47, you have Peter and Cornelius. We already talked about that. And he said, these believers have the Holy Ghost. So then they got baptized. Well, that's the right order. You get saved, born again, accept Jesus Christ by faith. You're then spiritually circumcised. You automatically get the Holy Spirit from God. Okay. And then you go right here and you say, I believe that the Lord is the, I mean, Jesus is the Son of God. Okay. Acts chapter 16, verses 14 to 15, Lydia was the first, you know, saved person in what they called Europe. That's what the note says. I was, I have to check that out more. It probably is. But she opened her heart to receive that liberty. You know, that's one of the greatest things about being a Baptist is you have personal liberty and you have soul liberty. But that's why we've gotten into so much trouble. That's why we've been burned at the stake. That's why even in this United States, Roger Williams, other Baptists, they had to flee because you had, why do you think Maryland is called Maryland? Okay, it was founded by the Catholics, all right? And they put Baptist preachers in jail because they didn't have license and they would not bow to the ecclesiastical authorities that were there. And Baptists have always been that way because we believe we're supposed to be independent, okay? But also, it's, they're the ones, you know that the Bill of Rights wouldn't, and the Constitution would never have been signed and gone into effect if Baptist pastors hadn't signed that. Because at the very end, when the Constitution came and James Madison and Monroe and Benjamin Franklin, they came to these people and said, we want you to sign the Constitution. They said, we won't do it. There's no provisions for freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and freedom to bear arms. So they promised them, you sign it, we'll pass the Bill of Rights, and they did. Because back then, somebody's word counted, okay? Something, he, even a politician, <laughs> okay? So they did, and so that's what we have, and that's still today. Baptists believe we have liberty. You wanna believe a certain way, go for it. You wanna destroy yourself, you wanna to go to hell, go ahead. You wanna act like a fool, go ahead. You know, you wanna think that you're a man when you're a woman, you know, and vice versa. Okay, go ahead, is totally of the devil. Okay, we know that because it's against the word of God. Okay, it's not because we made it up or we want to be prejudiced or we're haters as they want to accuse you, but you're not. It's the word of God that's teaching you those things. Okay, then we had last, uh, second to last here, Paul. He was involved with the Philippian jailer in Acts 16, verses 30 through 34. And we know that he came out and said, what must I do to be saved? I think if I had been a jailer and the jail rocked and the doors all open, you know, and I was ready to kill myself, what a perfect opportunity to lead somebody to the Lord. You know, and I think that's something as soul winners we always need to be aware of. Sometimes we're so interested in getting our message out that we're not paying attention to what's going on to the person we're talking to. And if they're, they have no interest or things, it, probably everything's going good for them. You know, eh, everything's wonderful, I just got a raise, or somebody promoted me, or my, I got a new girlfriend, you know, or all this other stuff, whatever. But you look at a certain person, you see they're hurting? Man, go for it. Get, talk about the gospel. Recognize, how many of you got saved because you were down in the dirt? Okay, <laughs> that was me. I don't know. Now, some of you, praise God, you're probably 10 times more spiritual than I am. So somebody had to just ask you, you want to get saved? And you said, yes. Okay. So that's it. And, uh, you know, more power to you. But boy, it took me having my face in the dirt, you know, and knowing that my, I had messed up that's my right. life and I could do nothing to fix it. 
because yes. everything I'd done to fix it before then didn't work, <laughs> you know? And so don't ever feel like after you've been saved that things go bad. Just start thinking back, to, you know, don't create this fiction in your mind as to what it was like before you were saved. Most of the time it was miserable. It was lonely. It was addicting. It was anger. It was hate. It was dissension, you know, strife. When you come and you get saved, the Lord provides a peace inside of us that we cannot, like I said, pass us all understanding. And then lastly, Acts 18, verse 8, we've got Paul in Corinth, and he led a synagogue leader to the Lord there. They got saved. So those are all believers, and that's the most important thing for you to recognize is you need to be a believer to be baptized. If you, if you are not, you're just getting wet. That's all it is. Okay, now what is, uh, what is baptism? We already talked about this a little bit. Uh, who, okay, I didn't write this in. This is the believers are the ones to be baptized. And what is, what did I do here? Okay, yeah, what does it mean? We talked about that. It's to be the picture of Jesus, death, burial, resurrection. Okay, and then right here I said, why? Well, you know what I forgot to put in there is what. <laughs> no, I did put what, okay. Yeah, no, and this is faith. Put this in here. Okay, and then let's talk about why? Why be baptized? Who knows? Pardon me? That's right. That's one of them. That's right. I, I can put that in on number two. But the first one, yeah. And let's do that. Jesus says to. Okay. Thank you, Shannon. That's right. Is it with one O or two? One. one. Thank you, Grandma. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Why be baptized? Okay. Jesus was baptized. Amen. He was our example again. Amen. What did he say when he told, when he came to John, John told him, I should be baptized by you. But what did he what did Jesus say? To fulfill all righteousness, this has to happen. And why? So that he could be our example. Because that is. Jesus is our example. You know, a lot of people say, Yeah, I follow God, but they really don't, you know, they don't even know God. You know, I'll never forget when I first got saved, I was taught to go into the book of Proverbs. And so I think I was saved about a month. And I was convinced that that the word wisdom in there meant some angel or something, you know, because I had absolutely no teaching. It was just, I was loony to. But we know that's Jesus in there, you know, in the book of Proverbs. And him, you see the word wisdom. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. And so you've got to get your doctrine right. You have to get this straightened out. But Jesus was our example. Second is, like uh, a pastor's wife, Mrs. Stevenson. <laughs> Because he said to, and last, the Bible tells us to. It's the Bible way. Go to Acts chapter 8, and we'll see this here with Philip. chapter 8 and verses 37 and 38 and Philip said if thou believest with all thine heart okay doesn't that sound familiar soul winners when you talk to people you know do you know in your heart you're born again thou mayest and he answered and said I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God and he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down 
both into the water. That right there destroys anything with sprinkling, anything that all these other churches teach, whatever, out of the squirt gun, you know. Both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Because the Bible tells us. Go to Acts 16. And verse 33. And we're going to be wrapping this up here real quick. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized, he and all his straight way. And, of course, that's the Philippian jailer. Again, he had to believe first. Then he was baptized. And then Acts 18.8, we have the reference there to Crispus. So it's a testimony that we have. And I just can't emphasize enough how much, you know, I just praise God for this church. Amen. Praise Amen. God for our pastor Amen. and those who teach here that recognize. See, you have two choices. You can get saved. Praise God for that. But if you're not a disciple, you are disobeying the word of God. Because what did the, Jesus say? He said, go ye therefore into all the world and teach them. Yeah, in fact, let's go there. Matthew 28. Let's go back and let's close with this. And again, this is not me saying it because I have no authority. The authority is in the word of God. It's basically what he says that matters, not anybody else. And Jesus used this as an example, but this is also the very same thing that we use for uh, um, uh, you know, going out soul winning is the very thing we use for sending out missionaries. It says, go ye therefore, verse uh, 19 in Matthew 28, go ye therefore and teach all nations. Well, you can't teach anybody anything you don't know. And that's why I, I think this uh, discipleship class is so great and the materials on it. Brother Stevens has just done a tremendous job building step by step by step to just help bring that recognition of what really happened when you get saved. What, why you can believe it, and then what you're supposed to do with it. And it says, Therefore teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them, again, to observe. And that's, if you're not taking advantage of all the teaching that's coming out of this church, what are you waiting for? And my question would be, what are you getting taught on your social media? What are you getting taught on your emails? What are you getting taught to your friends, okay, your neighbors? What are they teaching you? Because you are getting taught. You're either a teacher or a student. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, that's one of the biggest things. When you go out soul winning, the minute you run into a teacher, you stop. Because you need to find a student. You need to find somebody who's got an open mind. If somebody's trying to tell you everything the way it's supposed to be, you're wasting your time. Okay, so what you need is a student, but we need to be able to go out and teach other people. So you've got to be a disciple. And what does that mean? It means discipline. Weariness of the flesh. <laughs> I was listening to pastor when he's talking about how many hours he put in just to get the material ready to go over to the Philippines. And that doesn't count all the hours it took for him to go there and all the hours it took for them to teach and all the hours it's going to take to come back. It's a weariness of the flesh. Now, the spirit, joy, peace, and I think we're going to hear the uh, results of that meeting for a long time. I, I really do. Because, and I'll guarantee Brother George teaching dispensationalism, that's a whole other issue that I hope you get a hold of. You know, I never heard any teaching at all for the last 15 years I was in church. All we got was Old Testament preaching. Do this, do that. Why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? Oh, you should do this, you know, and all this other stuff. It's all works, yeah. okay? But you know what? If you get this salvation by faith, by grace, by mercy that the Lord gives to us, and you get that thing nailed down, you're going to want to be a disciple. Amen. You're going to want to be disciplined, and you're going to want to learn. Let's close. Lord, thank you now for all these people and their patience listening to me, Lord. I hope I help them with some information here, Lord. And I just pray now as we go into services, you'll be with the preacher. 
bless him, Holy Spirit, fall upon him in a mighty way and then make his words come to us. And Holy Spirit, you bear witness with us as to what we should do, how we should act, what we should think. If there's sin in our lives that we need to repent of, I pray that we will get that right because you've given us that promise, Lord, that if we confess him, you will forgive us, Lord. And what a blessed thought, Lord, because this flesh has nothing to do with things that are yours, Lord. We just tend to fight you all the time. We want to do things our own way. We want to rebel. But I pray that today we'll learn learn to be just a little bit more like our Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, and just to please you in everything that we do and say. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, guys.